And hello everyone, Peter here with another video for you. Hope you're all doing well today. Um, just having a good time here drawing some lines. Lines are something I always, always enjoy. That's why I like drawing the kind of pictures I do with uh, fine liners as opposed to, you know, like um, a paintbrush or, you know, like pastels or, um, you know, something that would create kind of a broader or rougher um, drawing or painting experience. I don't know, I just like the precision and, I don't know, the exactness of a fine, crisp black line. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those other kinds of art. It's just, um, this is what I enjoy. It's what I'm used to. And I should probably, you know, I try branching out every now and then. I should probably do that more. But, um, you know, this is, um, this is what I like. Anyways, I just want to talk about a few of the different ways that you can mentally go into a drawing. That you can, um, you can gear up and approach a drawing. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. And I'm going to mention a few that I've thought of. These certainly aren't the only ways you can do it. And... They're not mutually exclusive either. Like you, you can mix and match. Um, you can do two or three of these at once, or all of them. Probably, I don't know. Um, anyways, so probably the main one that um, a lot of art throughout history and a lot of artists do is just you can plan ahead. You can go into your drawing with something in mind that you want your drawing to look like. You know, like maybe you want to draw a flower or you want to draw a house or maybe one of the most popular types of art ever is you want to draw a portrait of a person that, you know, a person that is uh, significant to you. So you draw a picture and hopefully it looks like that thing at the end. The whole time you're drawing, every action you make in the drawing, every decision you make is... um. It's a decision that will get you closer to that end result. All right. Now, on the other scale, on the other end of the spectrum, is you can take uh, an aimless journey. You can you can do a drawing that um you're in it more for the journey. Like like maybe think of a tree. A tree when it's growing, it doesn't have any sort of end goal. It just kind of does its thing. If you plant a seed and it starts growing, it doesn't it doesn't have, you know, an image in its mind that it wants to look like a huge towering shade tree one day. It's just doing what it it's just doing what it does, you know? And that's how that's how I draw a lot of the time and it's kind of uh, therapeutic and it's just fun. Um I don't know. It's good. And I'm not saying it's better than doing a planned drawing. It's just how I find myself drawing a lot of the time. Um, similar to that would just be absent-mindedly adding things. And that's something you can kind of do a lot of times if you're uh, maybe in a class or like a business meeting or something and you're kind of half paying attention to one thing and half paying attention to, paying attention to your drawing. Um, you just kind of got a little doodle, you know, that's like the epitome of doodling. You're just kind of absentmindedly adding shapes and lines, patterns and stuff like that. Um, another mindset you can go into your drawing with is starting with some sort of basic outer shapes, kind of like I did here in this drawing and another drawing a couple videos ago. Um, you can just choose any sort of basic outer shapes, you know, like some triangles, a square, two squares, a circle, any combination of things like that, and then just kind of gradually filling it in with other smaller shapes, divide it up, and then, you know, yeah, fill it in with um, another sort of theme, um, patterns, textures, doodles, and mix and match any of these things that I'm talking about. Um, you can also go into doodle 
or any sort of drawing with some sort of theme. Like sometimes I go into a drawing saying this one is just going to be really leafy and naturey, or this one is I'm just going to use a bunch of straight lines and it's going to look all robotic and like real mech mechanized and stuff like that, or it's going to look like a city. And then I just kind of go from there and whatever I do, I just make all my lines kind of conform to that preconceived notion I've got in the back of my head. And that kind of guides the drawing from there. And then one other thing that sometimes I use is, well, this, uh, this one's a little bit farther out there. It's a little bit weirder, but sometimes I kind of pretend or I think in the back of my head that maybe, maybe all art already exists already since the beginning of time. It already all exists. And if you're really focused, if you're really in the zone, you can see it there, the piece you're going to draw in your mind. Maybe it's kind of rising up through the bottom of the paper. And so then I attempt to draw it. I trace this hidden thing there and free it from the paper. And if I'm not focused enough, if I'm not careful, every now and then I lose it a little bit and have to substitute something of my own and I misdraw it a little bit. But men and artists of more delicate vision are able to draw what they really see in the paper, in their mind, if you will, and they draw it more faithfully, and they become the famous works of art that you see in museums, the paintings and sculptures and drawings, the ones that are the pride of nations. That's just a little hunch I've got. It's an idea I got from a Ralph Waldo Emerson essay on poetry, actually. So I didn't just pull that out of the blue. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Use any of these ideas. They're fun to, like, mix together. If you don't know how to go at a drawing mentally, you know, you don't know where to start, just kind of start with something in your head, even if you know you're just going on an aimless journey. Anyways, thanks for watching. Goodbye.